welcome to episode two of my Warhammer Showcase and Minifigure Collection. Um, in the last episode, we saw that I had uh, received a couple boxes of different figures, uh, Core Bloodbound, um, uh, uh, some little tiny plastic figures of individual anti-paladin and grave guard. I also got um, some more Blood Warriors and like a tinier set, and I also got um, a angelic metal covered being with his griffin dog, which is interesting, I guess. But anyway, um, so it's, this episode I'm just going to give you a little bit of an update of where I am in the painting process and assembling them all. Um, so here we go. These are all the unpainted figures I have right now. Um, there are the the two mounts that are all uh, they're primed and glued um, with black. Here are also the the Blood Warriors, all primed and painted black. Um, so when I, when I paint them, their actual colors, the black paint will seal them in and provide shadows. This uh, mounted Blood Warrior is partially completed. I've done um, just the base red for his armor. Um, and some um, goldish slash brass parts. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have a lot of fun painting the mouse. They're, they're um, one of the most uh, interesting um, models that I have had to paint. And here in the picture, you can kind of see what the end result might look like. I'm changing, around, changing the color scheme around just a little bit. Uh, but that's generally how they're gonna turn out, probably. Um, but as I said, I'm not. I'm, all these, I'm not quite done painting yet. They're, they're you know, they're, they're primed and ready to go, I just haven't gotten around to painting them yet. But now on to the completed miniatures. Up first we have the Anti-Paladin. He has a really cool looking shield that has a face in it, which is really awesome. He's got skulls over the various parts of his body, and he's wearing like a skull helmet type thing with a nice red flowing cloak. Um, I tried to, to paint, paint him his armor a little more darkly, because um, obviously he's an anti-paladin and he's fairly evil, so his armor is very black and he, there's like little bits of brass in there and his sword's really nice and shiny. Um, generally a lot of skulls, a lot of evil characteristics, but I think he came out quite well, I should say. Next up is the Grave Guard. This guy is actually a lot more fun for me to paint than the other one. Um, his sword, most of all, has like a red ruby in it and it's kind of bent because it's soft plastic, but it has like little greenish runes set into it as well. Um, his um, clothing is um, light green with dark green, uh, I'm sorry, with a dark green wash. So it naturally flowed into the recesses and made it kind of, I don't know, just a little bit more, I guess, old and moldy looking as, as, as it is appropriate for a grave garden. And also his armor is very um, shiny, but it's also dark. Um, kind of signifying that he, it's been, he's been dead for a long time and it hasn't taken very good care of his armor, obviously, because he's a skeleton. I mean, what else What else can the skeletons do? Next is the Lord Castellant. On the right, we have his griff, uh, griffin dog, griffin hound. It's, it's called something like that, but basically it's like half griffin, half dog. Um, yeah, the griffin was kind of fairly easy to paint, basically just two coats of brownish... Um, colors and a little bit of highlights for his neck chain thing and the base so he took me didn't, didn't take me that long to paint but the main guy the stormcast eternal is pretty freaking sweet um he's carrying his this ginormous halberd he's carrying a little lamp um with some whitish letters around the side it's very angelic and bright and colorful he's also got a little tiny hourglass with some some uh, different colored sand inside of it um, he's also got a, a mixture of golden and silver armor, which was a lot of fun to paint. Just doing the, all the highlights for this guy was amazing. Um, you can see kind of he like his, his head has all those little words and he's got some thunderbolts at various points on his body. Here's his cloak with some flaps of scroll going down his back with various letters. Um, all in all, I mean, I, I really enjoyed the look of this guy. Um, he's just got a, got a lot of um, defining features and he's very spiky and angelic and just looks powerful overall so I'm really glad with the way he turned out. And my last but not least fully panned figure is the Slaughter Priest which is the leader of the Corn Bloodbound Army. So first off let me just say that this guy was a lot of fun to paint as well. Um, he's got like a lot, a lot of different 
bits and parts on him to make him interesting. Um, let's do number one. First, his helmet is more brightly red, red colored than the rest of his armor, so kind of makes that stand out. He's also got some horns coming out as well. Um, his hack blade is, it was, I gave it a black undercoat, and then I did some, uh, like a layer of brass, and then I did highlights of silver along some of the edges. Um, I also did a, um, a slight cover of rust colored paint, which gave it that kind of like filthy, dirty look. And also near the, near the hill, you can kind of see that, that blue. Um, that was just inspiration I took from the, the box art where it had um, some blue outline. He's also holding this giant flail, which is rust colored and it just looks nasty all around. And if you pay very close attention, the end of the thing is stuck inside of him which is very awesome. He's also got some spikes on his back. He's got a skull hanging there, you know, very cool overall. Um, also, one more important part that a lot of people might not know is on the underside of his hand, he's actually got like a mouth right there. So it's got, it's like a living entity going inside of his arm. And I've kind of emphasized that by the, 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 the purple and pink coloration, which just makes it seem like his whole heart, arm is infected and giving him power and strength through the, the dark god of corn who demands skulls for the skull throne and all that heebie-jeebie stuff. Uh, but I, I like the way he came out. Also, um, of course, he doesn't look exactly like he does on the box, but I added my own specific style to him, and I, I think he came out very well as well. So that's the update for today, just giving a little bit of a progress video on how I'm going. Um, it's taken me about ugh, 15 to 20 hours to paint those guys you just saw. It's a very labor-intensive process. But don't worry, I'm working very, very hard on trying to get the rest of the guys painted and those guys ready to go so they're all completed and fresh and shiny and so I can have the whole army for you guys to see. It's going to be really awesome. Um, also, I mentioned this a little bit in the last video, but... Uh, be on the lookout for like an actual like humongous Warhammer showcase and um, all the other miniatures I've collected. I'm going to be doing kind of like a little bit of description of um, both what the models look like and a little bit of backstory maybe to, on some of them. Just basically just showing off my collection in general. So this is going to be definitely a multi-episode series. I'm not just going to stop it at, you know, you know, when I'm done painting the corn blood mound and all those other guys, and all the all the mounts and all the soldiers, I'm not just gonna stop there. I'm just gonna, I'm probably gonna keep going and show you guys all the collection, the entire collection. But hey, if you have an idea of anything you guys want to see, just put it down in the comment section below. Give me a, a like. Um, it just really encourages me to keep making videos of various styles and of different content. And as always, see you in the next video.